All right, today we're going to talk about the number line and considering something called interval notation, which you may have seen before, but we're just going to go over it because it will be used often in this course. So first thing to talk about, the number line. I think we're all familiar with numbers ranging from negative infinity to infinity. We'll put zero right here. And it includes all of the numbers, right? The number line would be all real numbers, everything rational and irrational, negative and positive, and zero. So we want to talk about interval notation. If I want to talk about a certain set of numbers, I might say I want everything from 3 to infinity. Or I might say I want everything from 3 to infinity. And there's a very distinct difference between these things. First of all, I'm going to give us our point of reference, the number 3. This first one, in red, has a parenthesis. And a parenthesis is the same thing as writing strictly less than or strictly greater than. Whereas this one has a bracket, and a bracket is the same as writing less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So when we graph these things on a number line, if I'm talking about 3 to infinity, okay, I'm talking about then not 3 itself, but everything bigger than 3. Whereas this one, I'm talking about 3, I'm including it, and everything greater than 3. Okay? So again, a good way to remember that too is that with this bracket, you have to write a horizontal bar. Okay? So bracket is replacing one of these signs that we've worked with previously. Alright, so using that, we have our very first one that says x is greater than 3. Well, that means that 3 is going to be the smallest number, but I'm not actually going to include it. And then I can have everything bigger than 3. So on our number line, you don't have to mark 0, but I'm going to, just so we have it. I don't want to include 3, but I want everything bigger than 3. And now when I say I don't want to include 3, that means I do include 3.00000000001. Okay? Everything's so close to 3 just not 3 itself. Alright, so in this next one, x is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, well if it's less than or equal to negative 1, that means negative 1 is going to be on the right hand side of our interval because that's our biggest number. And we are allowed to touch negative 1. And then I want everything that's smaller than negative 1. So again, think about your number line. Okay, x is less than or equal to negative 1. Well if I plot 0, Negative 1 is going to be right here. And I want to include negative 1 and everything that is smaller than it. So this ray right here, okay, is starting way over here. Oops. Way over here at negative infinity. Okay. But it's going all the way until negative 1. Okay. You can also use the parenthesis or the bracket on the number line itself. Alright, so this next one, negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is strictly less than 3. Well again, reading from left to right, I want to have negative 1 is my smallest value, and it's okay to be equal to negative 1. And I want to go until 3, but I'm not allowed to actually touch 3. So I want everything sandwiched in the middle. So if here's 0, here's negative 1, and I'm allowed to include negative 1. Here's 3, and I want everything in between. Now I also could have written that as bracket and a parenthesis instead of a closed circle and an open circle. Okay? Now, describe each verbally. Alright, well, this one is going to be all numbers greater than 3. So pick a number greater than 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, uh, 4.75, 2 is not greater than 3. All numbers greater than 3, okay? This one right here, x is less than or equal to negative 1. So this is going to be the set of all numbers. I guess we should be careful, all real numbers that are less than or equal to negative 1. My pen kind of jumped around there. 
less than or equal to negative 1. And this last one, we said before, means it's all numbers. greater than or equal to negative 1. But less than 3. Okay, and you, you've worked with this inequality notation before. It's, we're going to be switching to this brackets and parentheses. Again, one more time. We have a number line going from negative infinity to infinity. You're always going to use parentheses with negative infinity and infinity. Because infinity isn't really a number, you can't ever include it. As soon as you get to infinity, all of a sudden you could just take one more step and now you're at infinity and one, right? So that's a new infinity. So whenever you're talking about infinities, you're always going to use parentheses. And then you choose bracket or parenthesis based off of if it has an equal to bar, you're going to need a bracket. And if it doesn't, you're going to use a parenthesis. All right, this one I want you to try on your own, the three different pieces. Given 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 5, go ahead and write it in interval notation, graph it on a number line, and describe it verbally. So think about it, and I'm going to have you pause your video when you're ready to check on pause. Alright, so interval notation, we want a parenthesis around the 1, and we need a bracket for the 5, okay, and it's all of the numbers that are squished in between there. So on our graph, we have an open circle and a closed circle, and then everything colored in between, or you could use a parenthesis and a bracket and everything in between. And then verbally, it's all numbers greater than 1, but less than or equal to 5. Alright, so I'm going to give you one more. I know it's not in your packet, but you can make some room somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, I want you to try to do x is less than 4, and also x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, you don't need to do the words, just go ahead and write the interval and graph it on a number line. Pause your video. Alright, so I actually graphed on a number line first because I think I'm a little bit more familiar with going from this to this. So x being less than 4 means here's 4 with an open circle, and I want everything less than that. Well, to translate it into interval notation, that means I'm starting, we read left to right in, in the English language, so also on the number line. My lowest value over here is negative infinity, and I know I'm never to include it, so I always use a parenthesis. Then my biggest number on the right that I'm allowed to go to is 4, but I'm not allowed to touch it, so again, it's a curved parenthesis. Likewise on this one, x is greater than or equal to 2. If you start with graphing it, well, that means 2 has a closed circle, and I want everything bigger. Reading from left to right, on the left, I start with 2, and I'm allowed to include 2. That's why this has the bracket, okay? And then my number line goes and continues till infinity, but I never include infinity. It's always just a parenthesis. We will use interval notation all year long, so if you are struggling with it, please make sure that you either send an email post in the discussion group, ask a question in class tomorrow. It's something that's really critical to your understanding for the rest of the year.